Hey guys, I'm Mark, and today I'm going to show you how to make this archery target out of nothing but scrap wood and some garbage that other people were throwing away. The total cost of this thing to me is nothing but some screws and a little bit of glue. Check it out. Most of the recycled lumber that I will be using came from an old workbench that I tore apart a few weeks ago. Make sure you pull all the nails and staples out of old wood like this so you don't accidentally damage your blades when you cut it up. Next, I set up a stop block at the radial arm saw and cut all the pieces to length according to my plans. This is really easy since there are only three different types of wood used at four different total lengths. Basically, everything is duplicated a few times. At the table saw, I ripped the 3 quarter inch plywood for the face frame to 3 inches wide. Then, I ripped the bigger sheets of half inch OSB to 15 inches wide. These sheets will be the outside of the overall target. Keep in mind you don't have to use the same type of materials as I do. This is just what I had on hand. You can modify the design to fit your needs. Well, with all the pieces cut, we can start the assembly of this whole thing. The 3 quarter inch plywood is going to end up being a face frame that's going to hold the face of the target. And the 2x4s are going to be the internal frame that's really the rigid structure of the whole thing. And then the sheets of rotten OSB are just going to be kind of the skin around the outside to just hold it all together. Um, so the construction of this is pretty much entirely just uh, butt joints and there's an infinite number of ways to put butt joints together. I'm going to end up using pocket hole screws for uh, a reason that I'll get into into just a little bit here, but you know, we're going to end up having short side, long side, and this will end up being a perfect square when it's all assembled. Um, so, different ways that you could get through this. You could use a biscuit joiner and glue these butts together and put them in clamps and let them dry and be good to go. Um, I don't want to wait that long for them. Uh, so I'm going to use the pocket holes to just get them put together fast and then I will have these face frames that I can put on top of the regular frame. Now another option would be you could skip sticking these butts together all together if you wanted to. Um, you would just have to put them onto the frame one at a time once you get the thing put together. The reason I'm not going to do it that way is with this as one solid piece uh, assembly is going to be easier and refacing the target down the line once it gets all shot out is going to be easier too. It's just going to be one piece to remove and put back on as opposed to having to take off every piece and then fighting with the face of the target. Um, which we'll get into that in a little bit here. So anyway, I'm going to get the pocket hole jig out and start putting pocket holes into these so that I can screw them together. I drill three pocket holes in the ends of each of the shorter face frame pieces. I get lots of questions about this pocket hole jig. I bought it a few years back and I love it. I don't want to get too sales pitchy, but this is the Porter Cable 560 Quick Jig for anybody who's wondering. They pretty much thought of everything when they built this. Using the flat top of my table saw workstation, I glue and screw all the butt joints together and end up with two 34 inch square frames. I took these outside and painted them quickly so they could dry while I work on the next step. Using the 2x4s I will make two more square frames. This time I will just use screws to secure the butt joints. These frames will be on the inside of the target so they don't have to be pretty at all. They just have to work. <clears throat> this right here is going to become the face of the target, the, the part that the arrows punch through but yet holds the fill in place. This is an old grain sack. Um, you can come up with these pretty easily if you go to a feed supply place or a, a grain elevator. You know, they do a lot of moving around of certain amounts of stuff in these things and when they get old you can, you can come up with them pretty, pretty free or cheap. Uh, either way, I had this one. I've had it for a while. You can see I've actually just been shooting at it as a sack stuffed with stuff. But um, now I'm going to cut it apart and staple it to that face frame that I made. Um, so that we have a more refined target.
With the grain sack cut to size, I stretch it out over the back side of the face frame and start to staple it down. Stapling one edge at a time and stretching the material as tightly as possible along the way makes for a better target face that is free from wrinkles. I trim away any excess material, then repeat the process with the second sheet. This will make the face stronger and last longer. Perfect. Okay. Then I take the finished face frame, square it up to one of the interior frames, and screw it down. This pinches the material between the two frames and holds it tighter. for Declan. So one side is done and it may not make a whole lot of sense right now but it will once I start assembling the sides. So this is a front or a back and then this is going to be a front or a back. The reason that I stapled the face of the target to the face frame is so that down the road when this gets worn out I can just pop these screws out and pull it off and put a new face on it and then put those back up and I won't have to disassemble any other part of the target. Now potentially you could take the face material and staple it to this internal frame and then you could just take these pieces one at a time and screw them down and that would hold the target together. It would just, th that would avoid having to do all these butt joints and glue and screw and whatever method you want to go for. Uh, it would avoid putting those together. But this way, it's only one piece that you have to remove to replace the target face down the road. Um, if you did it with one piece at a time, stretched out, it would work. It would just be more time consuming in the end. And I'm, I'm going for the more work up front for less work later. With both frames assembled, I attach the outer sheets of OSB that hold the whole thing together. Starting with the side pieces, I square up the edges, then screw them into the 2x4s. Make sure you don't attach these pieces to the face frames. Once the sides are attached, I put on the bottom the same way. This target will be pretty big and heavy when it's finished, so it needs a good way to get moved around. I had this old grill that recently died on me, so I chopped the legs and wheels off of it so I could use them on the target. I drilled holes in these legs and fastened them to the bottom of the target. There's going to be all kinds of alternatives to using old grill wheels. You just have to figure out what you have access to or what parts you're willing to buy. Next, I attached some handles to the opposite side of the wheels and now I have a target that you can push around like a wheelbarrow. I also added a foot so that the target will sit level. And this is all the stuff that's going to make this target work. If you get enough pallet wrap and you pack it tightly enough, uh, it'll stop arrows really fast and it takes a long time for it to wear out. So if you can come up with a source for this, if you know somebody who works at a company that does a lot of receiving, um, you can go and just check with different businesses in town and you can come up with this stuff for free because people are just throwing it away and that really makes this project work. <sighs> With the target stuffed full, I attached the top to hold it all in. I also cut a stencil and painted some aiming points onto the target. The locations of these dots isn't too critical, but since this is a two-sided target, it's a good idea to stagger the dots so that you aren't shooting at the same spot from both sides. This will make it last longer. Finally, I use one of the handles from the grain sack and attach it to the side of the target. This makes for a convenient handle. It's good for moving the target around a little bit or for lifting it in and out of a truck if you need to. I took a few test shots at close range to see how well it stopped arrows. It looks like at six yards, my arrows stick through the backside just a little bit, but they don't pass through. Well, there's one more test for this thing. I've got the target set up down there at 60 yards, uh, and I've got it sitting next to a factory target that I bought for about $65. You can see that my free target is a lot bigger and a lot more visible than the expensive uh, factory target. And, and I say expensive, $65 is actually pretty cheap to go and buy a target with. You can spend a lot more money than that. Um, 
So anyway, we're going to launch a couple of arrows and see how it holds up. Let's go check it out. Well, that's pretty terrible shooting, but you can see that the arrow stopped just fine. They didn't pass through. They poked through the backside a little bit, but they're in no danger of the fletching getting buried into the target. Um, I am going to try to get a little bit more plastic wrap and stuff it in there just to make it stop even faster. But this is looking pretty good. So one more note about the way I designed this is that there are no straight down seams from the top. The top is the overall footprint of this entire thing, so water has less of a chance to get in it. And same thing from the sides, the faceplate is recessed so that no water is getting into that from the top. Now it's still, you know, it's not sealed up water tight, so water is going to get in there. This was just one attempt to, to try to lessen that to some extent. Well that about wraps it up for this video. One more thing that you could do is you could use some paint or some kind of a waterproofer around the top and sides of this thing to make it just that much more waterproof and that much more durable since the intention is to just leave this out in the weather. Um, you can do that but I don't think that it's completely necessary because a friend of mine built one of these exact targets about five years ago and in that five years He's had to tut, replace the face one time, and he's restuffed it with new packing material once or twice, I think. But he hasn't had to replace any of the wood pieces. Nothing's rotted away, nothing's gone bad. So anyway, thanks for joining me, and I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And hit subscribe if you haven't already, because I'm going to come out with more videos here real soon. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Stop looking at that rock. The rock doesn't help.